Hi, it's Derek Watson, dentist here from uh, First Impressions in East Kent. And uh, another video today, and this one's going to be on the subject of NHS versus private. It's of interest, obviously, mostly to people who are in the UK, where we have the two systems. And what I want to do is just spend five minutes discussing the uh, various pros and cons, merits and demerits of both. And, and also mention a third system, which I'll probably cover in a different video. So what essentially is NHS work? Well, um, dentists are uh, subcontract to the National Health Service for NHS work. You have to have an NHS contract and uh, the NHS tells you how much work they expect you to do and how much they're going to pay you for it. Um, the main difference between NHS and private work is the amount of time that dentists have available and also the quality of the materials that they're allowed to use and also the quality of the um, laboratory work that they fit. So it's uh, quite difficult, I think, for a lot of dentists to talk about the, um, the quality of NHS work because it's considered a bad form to deprecate NHS, uh, the quality of NHS work. And so as a result, a lot of patients and, uh, think and a lot of dentists pretend that NHS and private work are pretty much the same thing. So in which case, obviously, the patients think they're getting a fantastic deal. If they can get a root treatment for £69 on the National Health Service, uh, that includes the checkup, the x-rays and and a couple of fillings, um, whereas they'd be paying uh, four, five, six hundred pounds for a root treatment privately, then obviously that sounds like a fantastic deal, right? But um, of course, there's nothing, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and so um, the the difference is, as I say, between uh, the, the, that um, the problems that the NHS dentist has is that he's working down to a price. He's going to get paid about a hundred pounds for that course of treatment and so of course he has to do what he can he has to do the best he can for 100 pounds and of course he is going to do the best he can for 100 pounds but at the end of the day it's going to be his, his best for 100 pounds whereas um, so he's working down to a price that's what i'm trying to say whereas uh, a private dentist is the opposite a private dentist tends to be working up to a standard the way that uh, private fee setting works is that the dentist will look at the amount of uh, surgery time necessary the amount of materials necessary any laboratory work uh, they'll decide at what what sort of standard they want to work. What you know how um, how um, what what sort of standard, and then they will then just decide a price, and that's the price they'll offer to the patient. And then it's up to the patient then to say yes or no. The patient can say no, it's too expensive, or no, I'm going to try and get this done on the National Health Service or whatever. Um, the National Health Service is no. no um, uh, you know, some patients have no option but to use the National Health Service. If you're on benefits, it's there as a safety net for people. Uh, the government tends to sell it as slightly more than that. They tend to say that uh, if you're a taxpayer in the UK, then uh, you're entitled to National Health Service treatment and um, you should be able to obtain all your treatment on the National Health Service. I think this is uh, slightly misleading because, and they have to say that because if they didn't, then nobody would pay their tax. So people tend to see uh, the sort of membership of the National Health Service scheme as um, something that they're entitled to in return for paying tax and national insurance. But, um, uh, you know, everyone can use the National Health Service in the same way that everyone can stay at the Savoy. It's the sort of thing that uh, is, you're told that you, you have the right and you can exercise this right, but then when it comes to it, it, it becomes, you know, it can be quite difficult to exercise that right. Some people um, want National Health Service treatment because they believe that um, uh, that it is, uh, you know, even that um, even if the work's not quite as good as private, it still represents good value for money. And I think, it, you know, obviously that's not that that's quite true. There are some problems with working down to a price. One of them is that uh, if uh, you know, you can never be sure if a dentist tells you whether, uh, whether that you need to have a tooth out, whether it, it needs to come out, or whether he would make a loss trying to save it and therefore that his advice is then tailored to the uh, economics of the situation. Now that's not supposed to happen but human beings being human beings you know and the way that the NHS works all the treatments lumped into one of three courses of treatment it's like the three bears porridge either there's only three types three courses of treatment three charges on the National Health Service and so dentists tend to try and do as little as possible uh, in uh, in the highest treatment band that they can and, and that's uh, just that's a facet of the system they're encouraged to do that the system encourages them to do that so if you just remember time quality materials quality laboratory work they're the three big difference between the national health service and private nhs den dentist working down to a fee um, private dentist working up to a standard 
And then the third way of doing things, which is a sort of a dental plan type arrangement, is uh, interesting enough to have its own video. So I'll do one of those uh, at a later date. Anyway, nice to talk to you. I'll uh, see you soon.